welcome to my series about Crossion X. This first part is just a brief overview to get familiar with the diverse parts of the user interface and of the different groups of functions of the VST. I have created some audible events, a percussion loop and some chords, and have put them on a track in my DAW. Next, I load Crusher X into the effect path of my track. Instead of using a pre-produced loop, I could also feed Crusher X by playing live, or I could load a sound file directly into the VST and play Crusher X like a synthesizer. I start with a kind of default preset, not showing much of an effect at all, and start my loop. I want to change the length and the rate of the grains, but First, I release the grain view, this window in the, in the right upper corner, and make it bigger to get a better view on what is going on in Crusher X, what is happening to the sound. Pressing the length tab in the upper left corner of the user interface, I can change the length of the grains with the slider, or with a wheel next to the slider, or simply by clicking on the number below the slider and typing in the wanted length. Clicking the birth tab, I can change the grain rate using the same procedures. Every change is shown in the grain view, the rectangles representing the grains. As this video is only a quick demonstration to give you a first impression of the VSD, don't worry if there are functions and things you don't understand yet. There will be enough of explaining, showing and teaching in the following detailed videos. Next thing to change is the tuning of the loop, so I switch to the speed step and try some small changes. But let me use a modulation of the speed instead of a fixed detune. I choose a moderate modulation depth and a moderate modulation frequency. As you see, the colors of the rectangles in the grain view change according to the tuning of the grains. But I want a different modulation mode, not a sine wave. So I click on the little mode window and from the list I choose Spline. The new window opens and I can draw in my own modulation mode. Let me switch the modulation off again by adjusting the modulation depth to zero. I want the loop to sound a little, well, wet. Clicking the sweep tap and increasing the amount to a little above zero and increasing the grain length as well, a little at least, brings me where I want to get with my sound. I turn sweep off again and load another sound. I'm going to play it live, but I want some X crush to be processed, so I switch to the correspondent tab, turn it up to about 80%. Then I modulate the length of the grains using a triangle wave and a logarithmic algorithm. Let's play a little and change the amount of X crush while playing. <laughs>
to make the changes smoother, I increase the morphing time. What is the time Crusher X needs to follow the changes of the sliders? Let's start with something new. I load a sound file directly into Crusher X. It's a flute, something quiet and soft after all these harsh sounds. With the delay slider I can scroll through the whole sound until I find a point I like. I increase the number of generators, what is the number of generated grains at a time, and also the grade of the VST's polyphony. I increase the generator's offset to put a little of delay between these ten layers of grains. And at least I switch the keyboard MIDI mode to unisono gated and play around a little. I link length and birth rate so that when changing the grain's length the birth rate will automatically follow. Then I reduce the length of the grains to about 20 milliseconds. I go to the Speed tab again and increase modulation depth to about 75 and draw in a new spine curve. Adding a second modulation, the cloud modulation, brings even more complexity. Well, I take another example and load the sound of a gong. With the delay sliders I scroll through the sound again until I find a point I like. length at about 150 and the birth rate at 16 milliseconds. I want four slightly delayed generators. The mini mode has to be unison gated velocity this time because I want to decrease attack to zero and turn release all the way up. Let's play a little. the full amount of sweep after that. And 
Here comes a second example using the same gong sample, just taking the sound from another point in the sound and modulating this point some milliseconds to and fro. Well, back to the roots. Let's start with the drum loop again. But this time I'm lazy and try some randomization. When coming upon a useful sound, you can, of course, store, export it as a preset to Crusher X. Let's reset all and do something else. I choose a low pass filter and adjust the frequency to about 1 Hz only, but uh, the modulation to about 4000 Hz. Modulation mode shall be Y up PM field. I go to the physical model pad, set the form slider of the bowel to about 50% and the ball's speed to maximum. Then I throw the ball in at the lower left edge. Listen and watch. Let's modulate the filter Q with X RPM field. Now some quantization of the trigger and a spoonful of the unprocessed dry sound by increasing the two dry sliders of the mixer. Let's change the quantization method to grain and increase the grain length to about 400 milliseconds. And the birth rate between 50 and 75 milliseconds. Increasing the morphing time to 360 and turning the intensity of the quantization completely to zero blends slowly to a smoother sound. What else should I mention here? Well, for example, that there is a huge amount of different scales we can load into the keyboard. Or that Crusher X has got a DCO of its own to be mixed to the signal we want to process. Import and export of presets is possible, of course. And not to forget the adjustable MIDI assignments. Needless to say that Crusher X has a MIDI learn function, of course. Last thing to mention today the numerous output and surround modes Crusher X has on offer. We have only scratched the surface of Crusher X's functionality in this video, but I hope it has helped you deciding whether or not to watch the next parts with detailed explanations how to use this VST.
I'm going to produce a lot of very short videos, definitely shorter than this one, rather than making a single huge and awesomely long tutorial. So, have a good time after subscribing, liking and sharing. Thank you.